Hello. Uh, this video is just going to go over um, information that would usually be provided during Southwest's curriculum night. Um, in case you're looking for the written version of all of this, um, everything is in one way or another included in the syllabus, which can be found on my Google Classroom page. Uh, this video will go over information about the teacher, that's me, uh, course content, grades, academic dishonesty, the distance learning schedule, technology required for the course, and general well-being. I won't talk too much about myself, just in the interest of time and clarity. If you'd like to know more about me, um, I will be posting more information uh, as the days go by. Uh, for now, my name is Elizabeth Carey. I use she, her pronouns. And uh, this is my second year at Southwest and my sixth year in the Minneapolis Public Schools. The best way to get a hold of me is via email. Um, you can see my email address here. You can also send me an email directly through the parent portal. Uh, it will go to the same place. Um, I try to respond to emails within 48 hours, but I appreciate your flexibility and patience during distance learning and all of the fun that comes with that. I do have a teacher website. You can see that link here. It is also available linked on the Southwest staff pages uh, website. I'm guessing this is how you got to this video, so you probably already know about this website. Um, this is not the same as my Google Classroom. Google Classroom is where I will be posting all class materials, assignments, all of that. Uh, the teacher website is more of a long-term goal for me. Uh, it's, it will one day be a permanent place where I can house resources for students. Um, but for now, it's totally a work in progress. You can feel free to check it out. Just know that it's a work in progress. All right, uh, your student is in Spanish 3 this year. Um, during Spanish 3, as with most years, honestly, we will continue developing uh, your student's Spanish communication skills across all modalities of communication, uh, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Um, we will totally review all of the Spanish 2 content necessary. I don't want students to stress about having retained information from last year. Um, it's always hard to retain language learning over the summer, um, and it's probably been even harder given how the world has gone this year and the fact that the fourth quarter last year was suddenly online. Uh, so don't stress, we will review, I promise. Uh, that said, this year we will be focusing heavily on communicating information about things that happened in the past. So in terms of grammar, this means we will be practicing the preterite, the imperfect, the present perfect, and the past perfect. Um, we'll cover other grammar points, of course, but these are kind of the main verb tenses that students will practice this year. Um, now, if you know me from last year, you know that I'm a total grammar nerd. I love uh, learning about the structure of languages and what that structure says about how people think. Um, but I recognize that language learning is more than just grammar and vocabulary. Uh, throughout all units this year, uh, ideas of intercultural communication and understanding, as well as critical thinking skills, will be embedded in everything we do. Additionally, um, I'm going to be, I mean, I always focus on study skills, but particularly during distance learning, um, I'm going to be encouraging students to figure out how to be self-directed learners and um, how to work on their problem-solving skills. And in terms of well-being, again, another topic that's always a part of my courses, but uh, especially during distance learning, we'll be focusing on anxiety management, meaning identifying when you're anxious or stressed identifying what's causing that stress, and identifying how to mitigate that stress. That's, it sounds easy, it's not, I promise. I still work on it, but um, I'll be encouraging students to identify these things in themselves, and then also to advocate for themselves, to say when they need help, what kind of help they need. I feel like this headline pretty much sums up how I feel about grades. Um, they do not. Grades do not equal your value as a human being. Um, they just don't. That said, they do still matter. We do still live in a society that values grades. Um, if you want to talk to me about the future of grading and finding intrinsic motivation to learn, I'm all ears. But 
here's my grade scale that I'll be using. Um, it's pretty standard. The only thing that's a little bit different is that the district has decided um, that during distance learning, we will not be giving Fs to students who don't pass a course. Um, instead of an F, a student will receive no credit. It shows up as NC on the transcript. Um, this will indicate that they did not uh, show mastery of the content sufficient to move on to the next level, um, but it won't negatively affect their GPA as an F would. So um, that's kind of the only big difference in grading this year. Now, of course, the minute I talk about grades, the question of late work comes up. You know, what happens if I turn something in late? Um, the short answer, the world will not end. It's OK. You'll be fine. Um, I can talk more about this with students during class, but generally my policy during distance learning for late work is that assignments will lose one letter grade for every week they're late. Um, so if something's due on Tuesday and you miss that deadline, well, that's you have a whole week before the next Tuesday to turn in that assignment, and you'll only lose one letter grade. Um, of course, if you turn in incomplete work, you will also lose points. So if you turn in incomplete work and it's late, you'll definitely lose points. Um, that said, like, it's, it's not the end of the world if a student turns in a late assignment here or there. Um, we're human. We make mistakes. We get overwhelmed. It happens. Um, my only concern is when it, there's a pattern of turning in late work. Um, I won't pass judgment. Um, I'll just reach out to the student and their family to see what kind of support I can offer. Um, if your student has a 504 or an IEP, uh, please know that I have read it. And if there are any accommodations regarding late work um, in that document, uh, those will be honored. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the topic of academic dishonesty because I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, simply put, don't pass off the work of others as your own. Uh, in group work, this gets a little more complicated because there's a difference between collaborating and working together and helping each other learn and just flat out copying someone else. Um, I think students have a pretty good handle on this distinction. Uh, if they ever are unsure, they can ask me for clarification. Um, in terms of tests, I will be making my expectations uh, clear in the directions for a test. Um, it will look a little bit different during distance learning, um, but whatever those expectations are, they will be made clear, whether a test is open note or if a student can use a certain resource or not. I'm assuming you're all relatively familiar with the concept of the block schedule we'll be using uh, this year at Southwest. Um, pretty much we've got A day, B day, and C day. Um, a days and B days, we have two hour blocks of three classes each. And on C day, there are 55 minute classes where all six class periods meet in a day. Um, this is a lot of screen time. I am super stressed just thinking about it. I'm super stressed just having prepared for this um, on a screen for so long. Uh, my eyeballs hurt, quite honestly. Um, and that's worrying me because we haven't even started the school year, and my eyeballs already hurt. Um, I'm going to try to keep my lecture time, my me talking at a class time, to a minimum when we're doing synchronous learning. Um, I will allow for multiple breaks. You know, if students need to get up and grab a snack or whatever it is, walk around, I totally understand, and I will be uh, working that into every class period. And generally, I'm finding ways to reduce screen time. Um, it's a little bit complicated in that you know students can't turn in physically handwritten papers to me, but um, I am looking for ways to minimize screen time. All right, for technology for this course, I'm going to try to keep it simple, clear, straightforward. Um, I'm assuming that students have access to and are using a computer for their courses, uh, meaning a laptop or a desktop. Uh, you can access some of the stuff on a smartphone, but the formatting is all wrong, and there's nothing worse than trying to fill out a form or type a paragraph on a smartphone with your thumbs and making sure you get all the right accents in Spanish. Um, if your student does not have access to a working computer and internet connection, uh, they should let me know as soon as possible 
the district is providing Chromebooks and mobile hotspots to anyone who needs them. Okay, that's out of the way. Uh, we'll be using Google Classroom to communicate, um, to post and turn in assignments. Everything will be there. Um, all links necessary, all resources will be in Google Classroom. And I'm going to organize it by week. Um, please don't look at the tab in Google Classroom that says grades. Um, it's nice that it exists, but it does not communicate with the portal version of Gradebook that we use to submit official grades. And quite honestly, I won't be maintaining two separate gradebooks to convey the same information. So long story short, if you'd like to know how your student is doing at any given time in my class, check the parent portal for their most up-to-date and accurate grades. Another technology component that I plan on using this year is Remind. Uh, this is a versatile service that can be used on a smartphone, a regular cell phone. I don't know what we call not smartphones, a flip phone. Um, you can access it on a computer. It's great, but it's optional. Um, it's simply a way for me to send reminders uh, to students about upcoming assignments or due dates. And um, it also allows me to communicate with them and them with me via text message without sharing our personal cell phone numbers. Uh, it, again, using Remind is optional. I will be sending out reminders on it, um, but all of that information will still be available in Google Classroom. So it's up to you and your student to decide if you want to be getting text messages from me periodically. Um, if you need the codes to join either Google Classroom or Remind, they're available in the syllabus. I'm not including them in this presentation simply because uh, this video is available publicly. All right, this last topic is uh, the most important to me in life. Um, it's general well-being. Um, I'm including mental health in this. Uh, if you're not doing okay, I can't expect you to pay attention and process new information and learn Spanish. Because how can you focus if you're not okay? Um, I've noticed that uh, as a society, we're talking more about anxiety and depression lately, given uh, protests, uprisings, pandemics, everything in the world right now. Um, and it's great that we're finally acknowledging this stuff. Um, it's nothing new to me personally. Um, I've personally experienced anxiety and depression in various ways for my entire life. Um, I won't talk too much about that right now, but I'm sure it will come up later. Uh, for now, I just want to acknowledge that anxiety and depression are real, whether you have a diagnosis or not. Um, and they can also be a primary or a secondary condition, meaning your anxiety could be anxiety due to a chemical imbalance in your brain that's just that's just how you are, um, or you could have anxiety because of external factors or another diagnosis, such as ADHD, ASD, OCD, all of these things that end in disorder, which is super judgmental and I hate it. Anyhow, anxiety and depression are real, so are myriad other conditions and diagnoses. Um, as I mentioned before, on the topic of 504s and IEPs, I have read all of them, I promise you. Uh, this is the first thing I do when I get my rosters every year. And um, I also do my best to attend all meetings about 504s and IEPs, whether it's amending one or getting a new one. Um, I, I think it's really important for teachers to attend these meetings. And if I can't attend a meeting for whatever reason, I will at the very least send my feedback via email to the people writing uh, your 504 or IEP. Um, I could say a lot more about this, but I would end up just rambling. So my big things are that we should destigmatize mental health and discussions of it. Um, it's totally normal and okay to talk about. Uh, I'm also a fan of embracing neurodiversity. If you're not familiar with the term neurodiversity, it's kind of this catch-all term uh, to acknowledge the neurological differences between humans. Um, it's kind of a part of destigmatizing these things. Um, I'm always learning more about my personal existence and the existence of others, and this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So please reach out if you're interested. Um, most important, I fully respect your students' and your family's privacy. 
So if confidential information is ever disclosed to me, I will not be sharing that with other staff members without your consent. Please feel confident in that. All right, that is it for now. Um, hopefully this will be the version of this video that I actually post. Uh, I look forward to working with your students this year. Please send me an email if you have any questions or concerns. Um, it's going to be a weird year, but that's totally okay. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Bye.